So Shelly Ann said, what are some of the things, tasks, chores that you've automated in your personal life to free up your time for your business? That's a really good question. So some of the tasks automated in my life is one, my schedule. So you guys can sign up for Calendly or you can get a virtual assistant, a VA to help you manage your calendar. That's something that has really given me a lot of my time back um, in my personal life. Also to the hack that I use in my personal life is everything that I do goes on my calendar, no matter what. Church, workout, time with the kids, date night, doctors, like anything goes on my calendar and I make it repetitive. So like I even have quality time with my kids on my calendar. Because if not, everything in life is going to be screaming for your personal time. And remember, if it's on your calendar, it'll get done. And if it's on your calendar, it's important. So we need to focus on that. And then any other thing that you can automate, like I used to take pride in like mowing my, mowing my yard and doing all that. I gave that up because I'm like, okay, I enjoy it. I love it. But I got to let somebody else mow the yard because that time I could be reading a book, which is going to 10x my, my time. Or I could be looking at businesses or I could be working on how to automate things. So automation is going to be very key. Finding that balance of what you automate and what you don't is very, very important. And then number two, what are your suggestions on building a team when the when the when most of the potential team members may live a long distance, making it in-person meeting and office meetings limited? Uh, I would prefer a few days a week at an office setting. Yeah, so here's what you can do on that. One, we have Clubhouse, you got Zoom, you got Google Meet, you got FaceTime. It's crazy because some of you guys I just met in person, but when we met for the first time, we felt like we've known each other for years because that's the beautiful thing of technology and Google Meet and all that stuff. So you want to know that, you know what I mean? Like you can connect in so many ways. And then what you can do on the team meetings is, you know, maybe schedule a lunch a week. So, hey, every week we're going to meet at a restaurant and kind of do like a lunch and learn as a team or every week we're going to meet and have breakfast or whatever it is so we can get some in-person time and make it to where everybody has a travel. So this week, Terrence is hosting the breakfast. He's going to have the restaurant. And then this next week, Shelly Ann's got it. Next week, Henry's got it. And just say every week we rotate to where we go meet in person. And then that's a way to make that in-person connection but then keep everything else to where you're meeting through technology. And then while working on my network, I realized that my priorities in real estate have changed. I refer all buyers and tenants out, which is good. We need to talk about that. I delegate everything and I'm more focused on building as much cash flow and generational wealth as possible. How do I better automate my business so that my hands, so that I'm not so hands-on with still high production? Yeah, that's a really good thing. So the biggest thing, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is you got to give up the administrative tasks first. So that's probably going to be a transaction coordinator. So to me, the first two hires need to be a transaction coordinator and then a team agent. And not just someone you refer business out to, someone who's really on your team, 50-50 split. I know a lot of teams that do 40-60 splits. I think 50-50 is fair, though. Um, and it's like, okay, you're going to take all my buyers. Here's my process. Here's exactly how I want it done. And then you, it, based on the production, based on how many leads you're providing, you may need two, three, four, five agents. And then you may decide, I'm going to keep all the listing appointments. Like, I've even given up all my listing appointments now. So I've been on, like, two appointments in the last – Hell, I guess 10, 11 months. So just finding that balance. But if you go back to that one session we were talking about, really automating your administrative piece first and do a transaction coordinator and do them on a per transaction deal where you pay them when you know you're bringing money in. To me, that's the most efficient way to scale in this industry, to go from a sole proprietor to really leading a team, going from that one person to leading a team is getting that transaction coordinator that you just pay on a on a per deal basis, and then Thank having a the team agent. Okay. Um, yeah. The transaction coordinator, because I was thinking about like combining two of those people. Like, can the TC and the the listing coordinator can they potentially be the same person, or does yes. it have to be separate and then still kind of pay on a per transaction basis? Yep. yep. 
So do a TC. I just call them a team coordinator. So they don't, they're not a TC or an LC. They're just a team coordinator in the beginning. So they're both rolled into one. And then as you produce enough listings and enough business, then you go to that person and say, Terrence, um, which one do you like more? Well, I love transactions more. Then all right, now you go get a listing coordinator. So that's that's a good thought. You want to put them in one bucket first until you get the production and still pay them on a per deal basis. Now on the listing side, it's a lower fee, but you pay them once the listing goes live. So on the transaction side, on average, it's between 350 and 500. And then on the listing side, it's between 150 and 250. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks for answering those questions that for sure. Gonna talk to you and take that back. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And just keep shaping it. Keep shaping it. Once you have a, a, a successful sales business that has the right amount of production, the right amount of GCI, which is gross commission income, and the right amount of net, then you're going to use that to buy real estate. That's going to create cash flow and income producing properties. Then off of your first business, which is still producing, you know, whatever GCI and whatever net profit, now your real estate is producing it. Now you're going to have cash flow from your sales business. You're going to have cash flow from your investment portfolio. You're going to take that and put it into the same bucket. And then you're going to go buy businesses with it. And here's the cool thing, y'all. A lot of times, certain businesses, you won't even need the cash flow from the sales business or from the investment business you're going to be able to buy some of these businesses with zero money down. Zero SBA loans, other loans that I'm going to show y'all how to get. You're going to buy these other businesses with zero money down, but you're going to be able to show them. Here's my sales business. I'm making a hundred grand or 200 grand a year off of a 300 grand a year or 500 grand a year. Hell, some of y'all even more than that. And then here's my real estate. Here's my principal pay down, which is called phantom income. And then Phantom income, including my cash flow. Here's how much I'm making in my real estate. And that's what you're going to package up on a financial statement because that's the move. And that's what we're going to use your financial statement to buy the businesses. That's why when people talk about credit, credit is important, but I'm trying to teach y'all to be financial statement like gangsters. Like I want y'all to be balance sheet gangsters, not credit gangsters. Credit is good, but there's going to come a time where credit doesn't matter. Your balance sheet is what's going to matter. Net worth, cash flow. So we take your cash flow and your net worth and we leverage that over. And that's how we buy these businesses. And I'll even pull up one and show it to you. I'm going to, like, I'm going to literally give you all the game. I'm going to show you one. He's like, well, T is because that's the thing with a lot of these influencers and stuff. If you ask them to show you something that they've really done, they can't. They're just on the stage talking or they're on the Instagram posting. Anything you ask me, Tim, show us your billion dollars in sales. All right, I got a spreadsheet. From year to year, here's our, here's every transaction. Well, show me you have this portfolio. Okay, here it is. Here it is right here. Like anything you ask me, I'm going to show you. Well, well, have you ever raised money for a million dollar deal? I'm doing one right now. I'll send you all all the link. I didn't actually put the link in the room so y'all can go check it out. Uh, so the point is, I'm even going to show you a, a, a case scenario where I bought an insurance company, zero dollars down. I'm making 150 grand a year off of. So those are the moves we're going to make. And we can do it. And like I started off earlier, the reason I started off with that thought process is there's never a time to be ready. You will never be ready to do some of this stuff I'm going to put in front of you. But the beautiful thing is you're here. That's the blessing. Like not everybody's getting this information. No one's going to really show you the real, real, real how to do it because they're worried about you taking food off their plate. That's not how I move. What God has for me, he has for me, period. There's nothing that no human can do that's going to stop the blessings that he has for me. So I move with an abundant mindset. There's enough for all of us. There's enough for all of us to achieve our dreams and be in the same team and be a part of the same tribe and all do well. So we'll keep it going. So Jabari, let's get into Jabari's question. How often should I put on my calendar to study my contracts? Also, for how long do you believe it is necessary? I would say in the beginning, you should be studying contracts at least one to two hours a week. And I think you should do it for a couple of weeks and just <clears throat> really double down on it, understand them, and then you can put them to bed. But I'd say once a year, set aside a couple of weeks to study the contracts. Have you seen an agent who wanted 
to not have to write the contracts. I feel that this is something I would like to work my way out of, but I need your input. I think everybody in the beginning should write their own contracts. Because I believe you never can hold somebody accountable to something you haven't done. That's why if you look at any of my teams or any of my businesses, there's not one person in that building or any of my companies, and we're up to 20 now, that I'm not going to ask you to do something that I've never not done. That's why I'm so hard on y'all, because I know exactly what it took to do it. So in order to understand it, it's like I can't lead you unless I've done what you're doing. It's like being in battle with a general who's never gotten on a horse. How are we going to follow you in the battle? You don't even know how to ride a horse. So I think in the beginning, you got to be the person that writes all of the contracts, all of those scenarios. That's why now when Laura calls me or Viet or anybody, I don't need to pull up the contract. I wrote that contract a million times. So now I can just say, all right, go to this page, do this. You need to switch this. This doesn't sound right. And I can coach you. But if I want to automate, there's certain things you can't automate. If you automate them too early, you're going to be building your business on sand. And that's one of them. It's like, um, if I'm going to end up being an offensive coordinator at some point, I got to know what it feels like to run the route. All right. And then do you have a daily monthly metric sheet that you follow to, to track your progress in relation to your goals? Yeah. I mean, it's a scorecard. So we've talked about a scorecard. EOS is what it is. So here's three things I've been chewing on. Let me give you all this nugget real quick. So one of them is Everything needs to have a number. Everything in your life needs a number. If you set a goal and it doesn't have a number, then it's going to be hard for you to track. Are you close? There's a reason why when we say, all right, I'm going to drive from Atlanta to Tennessee or from Houston to Dallas. When I first put it in, does it just say, well, you'll get there sometime this evening? Is that what Siri is saying? Or the, the, no, it tells you this is the miles. This is the time. This is how this is the turns and six miles. Take this right. And this mile. Why is there a number attached? Why doesn't it just say, hey, when you get to Elm Street, take a right. Because it's a journey that you're going on. It's a roadmap that you're going on. And if you don't have a number to measure, you're going to get lost. So on everybody's roadmap, there needs to be a number and a measurement. So if I'm trying to sell 50 million or 100 million this year, take 100 million and divide it by 52 weeks. Then I know what I need to sell on a week to week basis. So after the first month, if I didn't hit that number, am I, am I on pace to hit my goal or not? So that's where everything needs a number, no matter what it is. Like I knew in order for me to go D1, I needed to hit this much in passing yards. I needed to run this time. I needed to have this GPA. I needed to have this ACT and SAT score. I could be the greatest athlete in the world, but if I'm scoring a 10 on my ACT, it doesn't matter. So everything in life has a number, y'all. Everything in life. All right. What What are the metrics to someone or that someone must meet to become a certified coach? Yeah, so I'm rolling out the affiliate coaching. Um, so we'll talk about that in the future. I'm going to have coaches for each level. <coughs> And so they'll ha I'll have affiliate coaches for the sales path. Then I'll have affiliate coaches for the investment path and then affiliate coaches for the entrepreneur. So I'm going to come up with metrics that people need to hit. Okay. If you want to be a sales affiliated coach with REE, which is real estate entrepreneur, then you got to hit this much in volume. You got to do this. You got to do this. You have to have went through all the levels and all that stuff. So <laughs> that's in the future. <laughs> But let's open up the floor. Any other questions? Let's go open mic. I have a question. I had uh, I had mentioned it earlier on Clubhouse, uh, but I know the um, as far as the tracking um, in your lead generation is is very important. Um, how do you specifically like track what you get from where? Right. So let's say you got a lead or from a referral versus a lead from when you were doing calls, like. Do you, do you have a specific system that you use for tracking um, all the leads and everything that you got? I mean, for people who don't necessarily um, have someone keeping track for them, like how you got all the leads that you got, like how are you navigating that? Or is it just you get a lead, you write down or, you know, just how do you do that? In the beginning, they try to track too much. Then it becomes uh, it becomes too arduous, like too hard to keep up. So. 
the only thing I want y'all tracking right now is your pending and sales. Because honestly, unless you're spending money on ads, if you're spending money on ads, then you want to track the ad. But if you're not spending money on ads, you're still doing a sweat equity, which is what I'm telling y'all all to do right now. Don't just be blowing money and spending it on stuff. You got the time, you got the energy, sharpen your sword and just do it through sweat equity. But you want to be really tracking your pending deals. So, hey, I got a lease deal. I got a listing deal. You want to know where that business is coming from? Anything that you ink. So I would say in the beginning, track. And there's a there's a module in there. Remember where I break down where your business comes from? And I talk about the percentage of buyers and sellers and all that. Really take that and expand on what that is about. So really understanding, okay, I did five deals last month. Okay, well, then where did that come from? Because that's... Because at the end of the day, what did you actually execute on is more important than what's coming through the door in the beginning. Now, once you kind of know what you're, all right, I'm consistently getting business from this organization. I'm consistently getting business from Instagram. Once you start seeing the business, because to me, leads and business are two different things. It's business when you ink it. A lead is a lead. They can sign up on 22 different websites. But when they actually decide to move forward with me as their agent, then that's a different ballgame. No, that's good. Appreciate that, T. That uh, that that all makes sense. And yeah, I, you know, I've been doing the breakdown of the, you know, buyers versus sellers. But you know, that was the one thing I asked about. So no, that's that's right. So yeah, I'll definitely only track uh, what what's uh what's already agreed on or in writing. So appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, I think just focusing on the pending is important right now. Well, and Murph, what you also told me is. When it comes to you, you say you're going to make 100 calls a day with the BOP 105X is using that and say how many buyers or seller appointments that we got, because that's within the metrics of our sheet. And then from all the appointments, how many was converted? So I think uh, to get down more detail, because I was asking the same thing, is just using that one sheet from the course, which is the asset where it tells you your success formula and use that success formula and say, what progress did I make throughout the week? on my buyers and my sellers because uh, the success form is what you, we constantly need to reference to to help us know where we at in relation because that because the success formula is our 12-month plan and then we just need to break it down by the week yeah i put that in there for y'all if you haven't gotten to it yet you should be on it soon it's the yeah it's a success formula uh, <clears throat> work, uh worksheet yeah no matter if you got um 10 deals a month or 100 deals a month, that success formula will give you that percentage of business. Because remember, you want to track your percentage of business. Is it 50-50? Am I 90% buyers, 10% listings? Like, you want to be able to track that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, everything on level one, you can do on your own. There's no money needs to be spent. There's no million people you need to hire. You can do everything on your own. So that's why you need to get through that, those levels, get through those 20 assets. There's 60 modules. When we get to level two, but if you do everything in level one, you will be producing enough income. Okay. So yeah, just yeah, just focus on getting everything in level one that you can. Um, because level two is like I say, is gonna be about leverage. So let's go to the next question. Still got 20 minutes, y'all with the team that I have going right now, this very moment. And um, what I'm actually, you know, trying to get out and, you know, kind of pass out to them or whatever the case may be. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to their, the metrics you're, you're utilizing for the team, I know you talked about the Bob uh, 105X and how you get them to do that. But let's say, um, you know, you don't necessarily have, like the lead flow for them to make a hundred calls a day out of your database. Like, how are you? Cause like I have the lead flow and it's coming in, you know, every day, but it's dropping to them like warm to hot, you know, on a daily. So for your qualifying metrics for those that you're bringing on your team, like, are you challenging them to find leads from other places or is that just all database for you? You just have that many leads. I think it's a little bit of both. <clears throat> But you can tell them to bring their own database, you know, between all of them, you know, in your social media, your iPhone, your email. And then maybe you need to go scrub yours, V, 
So how many contacts? You can scroll to the bottom of your iPhone and see how many contacts you got in there. So right then and there, okay, that's 500, that's 5,000, whatever. Export those. And then your social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, export those. So maybe in the beginning, it's a lot of data entry, but get those all moved over into a database that you can call on and you can start dripping to. Got it. So, yeah, I have all mines in there. So like you're saying, encourage them to do to get all theirs inside of their database and then just have them go do those 100 calls a day to bring in. Yep. flow. Yep. OK. All right. Well, another thing is. So that's one way. Mm-hmm. The other one is. So that's SOI. The other one is expires. You're never going to run out of expires to call or terminated listings. Well, I don't know who else to call. Well, when I pulled up the hot sheet today, I seen 100 houses that expired this morning. So you got that. Then you got drive by for sale by owners. And then literally take that four quadrant V. I gave you 40 lead generation strategies in that four quadrant. Yeah, I got them. Right. So what you have to do as the visionary and the leader of the team is you got to create a plan. See, the reason people play for you on a team and follow your vision is because you're casting the vision out in front. You got to be the person casting that vision, which is a high responsibility. So you can be a rainmaker or you can be a process person or you can be a visionary. So those when we think about this industry, rainmakers are just people that, man, they just know how to create leads. They buy ads. They run YouTube videos. They do social media, Google click ads, and they just produce leads. Right. Then you have somebody who's a visionary. Here's the vision. Here's how we're going to do it. This is what it is. This is this. And and then you have that kind of process guru. So in the the beginning, you kind of got to be all three rolled into one. So so like right now, like you said, okay, as a rainmaker, okay, I've done that. So now I'm going to take the four quadrant agent training. And even though I may not be in that personality square, I'm going to look at that lead generation and say, do I have a strategy? If I don't, What's my strategy to get more open houses? And then once you build out the process for the team agents, then you just have them follow it. The hardest part is the process. Because once the process is there, it's repeatable. And that's what I'm building out for you guys. Like I'm getting ready on level two. I'm going to drop 60 lead gen strategies. And I'm actually putting the process step by step in there. That document alone is worth, in my opinion, millions of dollars. Y'all is going to get it. So that's why I tell you guys, y'all have made the investment, but don't share any of this information with anybody that's not in the coaching program because I'm not only trademarking it, it's proprietary. Proprietary just means if somebody, if it's in somebody's hands who doesn't, isn't supposed to have it, it's going to be a nice little battle. But the point is focus on that four quadrant and look at it and say, okay, do I have a strategy for each one of these lead generation pipelines? And if I don't, then you and whoever your integrator is, V, you need to build that out in the next couple of weeks. So say, all right, every week I'm on we it. Build out a new legion strategy, and then you just start plugging those agents into it. I'm on it, and you yeah. say, yeah, I just heard you say that integrator. You know what? That's my component that I got to put in place real quick. Is I got to get that integrator in place. You got to. All right. Yep, you're a visionary. V. Got to get that integrator. Man, thank you. Yep. That's See, what Erica is for me. Oh, go ahead. That's what, that's what Erica is for me. Uh, Ryo, those are my top three integrators, those three ladies. But you got to, I got other ones, but they're my top three. So you got to put them in, you got to get, you got to get one in place. <clears throat> and for anybody saying, what is an integrator? Read the book, Rocket Fuel. It's a really simple read. You have people that are visionary and then you have people that can, can cast vision and say, All right, let's do this, let's do that. And when they, the thing about visionaries is when they say it, it sounds crazy until it's done. So when I'm telling y'all, all right, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Y'all are like, okay, we hear you, but watch, it's going to happen. 500,000 millionaires will come off this course. It's going to happen. So I want y'all first 25 that are in here to be the first ones, but it's going to happen. Just follow the playbook. I had literally have it laid out. Intentional congruency. 
leverage this sales thing till the wheels fall off. But this is not your this is not your career. This is your this is your leverage point to create cash flow. Then get into buying real estate, tangible assets to cash flow that you can uh, amortize and use OPM, other people's money. Then we're gonna leverage those two vehicles to buy cash flow and business. And that's how you all will be millionaires, multimillionaires actually. Some of y'all may even go to the billion mark. Good for you. I want you there. I'm gonna be there. So come with me. I got a question. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's up, DeAndre? So uh, I've been thinking about like thinking bigger and I can tell from like listening to you, you think really, really big on a large, large scale, right? Yep. And um, how does one um, become one of those people that thinks big, you know, because I feel like I think big, but I feel like I don't think big enough, but I think big, bigger than the people around me, if that makes sense. So how does one become someone who thinks bigger? Yep. I'll give you two. <clears throat> I'll give you two ways. You ready? Three. You ready? This is big. This is important. Number one. Listen to podcasts that expand your thought process and read books that expand your thought process. Because if you repetitively hear something, then it becomes the norm. Like, oh, a millionaire this, a billionaire that, or this much. Like, to me, when I hear 100 million in sales, that's, that's not a big deal to me because I've done it for many years. So it's like it just becomes it's just a part of the day. So you got to listen to podcasts and read books that expand your mind. And then I say in that number one, too, is pray for the wisdom and discernment. In 2006, man, I started reading Proverbs and I read one a day for 31 days. And the big thing from that is I say, God, give me wisdom beyond my age and give me wisdom beyond my experience. And he, he says it in Proverbs. If you ask for wisdom, if you pray for wisdom, he'll give it to you. Read it. Test me on this. He says, I'll freely give you the wisdom because I have wisdom screaming from the rooftops. I'm ready to give it to you. The only thing he said, though, is wisdom can't be applied without what? Without knowledge. So I have to go get the knowledge. That's my part. He's going to give me the wisdom, but I got to go get the knowledge. So the books and the podcast, that's number one, DeAndre. Number two. You need to be around people consistently that force you to be uncomfortable. If you're in your comfort zone every day, hanging out with your friends, that's the wrong group. It's the wrong group. If you ain't being uncomfortable, if you just sitting on the back patio and I'm not saying hey, family and stuff, cool, bet. We'll barbecue here and there. That's what it's about. We're going to live. But at some point, stretch me, push me, make me uncomfortable. Make me feel a certain kind of way when you say something like, man, I want you, you know, DeAndre at 10 million a year in sales in the next 12 months. That may, should, should, that should make you feel a certain way. Like, OK, versus, bro, what game we going to go watch tonight? Or I ain't, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to watch games and stuff, but it comes a time where you got to make a decision. Are you going to elevate or are you going to stay where you at? And if the people around you are not elevating consistently, then why would you want to elevate? A lot of times those people make you feel less than because you are elevating. Well, man, you think you're better than us, man. Are you doing this and you doing that? And they joking, but they really hate it because they want to make you stay the same. Because remember this, when you elevate and evolve, you remind some people around you who they're not willing to become. They don't want to make the sacrifices and do the things, so they make you feel bad about doing it. Man, you're just so busy now, man. You know, Henry, you just selling all these million dollar houses. You're just too good for us now. All they're doing is trying to force you to stay where you at. So you got to get around people that's going to make you uncomfortable and you got to get around people who are doing what you want to do. That is the benefit of this course. This was the vision that God gave me. Give accessibility to me. And I'm not saying it to sound cool. It just it is what it is. I've done what I said I was going to do and I'm doing it and I want to help you guys get there. So that's the next thing. And then the, th and then the third thing would be is um, sitting down and really understanding why you're doing what you're doing. Don't think big just because it sounds cool, because big isn't always better. But you got to have a purpose attached to why you want to grow bigger and think bigger. 
for me, joining EXP, because I saw y'all's faces before I ever even moved my brokerage over to EXP. Like, TM5 was killing on his own. I had got to a billion in sales by, my, by ourselves. We didn't. But EXP afforded me a model to be able to partner with agents around the world. And that was the vision. So I didn't just grow big to do it. I had it because there was a purpose attached. So make sure you understand, like, all right, why do I want to do this? What is, how can I benefit myself, my family, and the people around me? So make sure you're, when you're casting that bigger vision, that you're thinking about bringing other people with you. Because I can assure you, if you get to the top alone, it ain't going to be no fun. You're just going to be like, man, I did all that and for what? So I had a, a quick uh, piggyback off of Coach V. I know she's starting her team. And, and those are some of the questions that I had a team before. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, feeding them leads and feeding them leads. And it's, it's warm leads. And what I come to realize is they want the people that are ready to go. Like they want <laughs> the hot leads. So it's like, well, they don't want to do any work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that's kind of like what the you know the issue well I wouldn't say an issue but it's like how do you find people that really want to actually make those calls or actually warm those you know because if, if they can do that why would they want to be on a team if that's what they have to do anyway to be on their own so what are some of the incentives to keep people engaged as far as being on a team because they from what I'm hearing you know, just from other brokers and they want to be fed hot leads, buyers that are ready to go um, pre, pre-qualified and everything. And I think that's the biggest component when with the team is they don't want to do the work. No, that's good, Shelly. And that's actually a great topic to end on. I actually was talking to um, a broker today that's a friend of mine who's going to join our organization. She's going to bring over her whole broker to like 55 agents. And we were talking about how she's splitting off her team, but she's going to join us at EXP. And so I was just coaching her and um, we had the same exact conversation. So it's funny you're even bringing it up, but you got to think about it in life, right? We, um, we want a chef. We want a massage therapist. We want to fly around the world for free. We want private jets for free. Why not? Right. Everybody wants it, but who's willing to pay the price. And so what you got to do is, You got to set the standard up front on this is what it takes to be on my team. It's the same way, like I use the example, anybody can be a Marine, no disrespect to a Marine, but a lot of people can be a Marine out of the gate. Now, in order to stay a Marine is a whole nother conversation, but you can sign up for it. So they're just taking in anybody and then obviously there's a process, whatever, but everybody can't be a Navy SEAL. So that's the difference. It's, it's not one. It's not the fact that one is better than the other. It's the fact that Shelly Ann and Coach V, what is your team going to look like? You can have Marines where you just bring in 10, 15 agents, 20 agents. I know these mega teams are just I can like I can grow a mega team in College Station in two weeks, but I'd much rather have Navy SEALs. And so I make that example up front. This is what I need in order to be on my team. And I think it's the perspective that you have to change. Now, my team gets warm leads but they know they got to hunt too. And I set that up front. So in order to even be on our team, you got to make a thousand phone calls in the first week. You don't make the thousand phone calls, the interview is done, period. Well, right then and out of the gate, Shelly, and I'm setting, I'm setting it up front. You're going to call on this team. Um, so that's, that's, that's really important. So you just got to make sure that you set the tone up front. And then once you set the tone, then it's just expectations. You'll get warm leads from us too, but you got to hunt too. And the moment you don't want to hunt, go do your own thing. And and the value that I have, I have a whole nother deck. Y'all seen the the EXP value proposition deck, but I have a whole nother deck just for my team. And it's like, here are the things that you get being on our team. And it's a very, very strong value proposition because I've studied every team in the United States. I know all the top team agents, I mean, top team leaders. And so you just put together your own value proposition that, hey, this is what you get on my team. Because honestly, like, I welcome anybody who wants to leave my team and go start their team. Katie Langdon was like one of my top, top mentees for five, six, seven years. And she went off and started her own team. Great. But it's going to take her a long time to put things in place for what, what I've created with my team. So you just got to decide. And every 
for me, the value proposition I have is like, it's pretty much a, a business in a box. You just come in make your calls and do what you do. And you can leverage everybody that I got in place already. And obviously that's broken down in a more specific way, but that's kind of the quick run over it. Okay, thank you. Is that something that you can share? Like maybe, uh, well, I know EXP would probably have like a their own team contract. Like, is it what you want it to be? Or do they have a certain way that it should be as far as like the breakdown and okay, you got to make a, a thousand calls in your first week. Does, do you need to make a thousand calls per week going forward or what are some of the other, and I know we have to go, but like, what are the top three things like that I can offer an agent to, in, you know, to say, okay, you join my team. This is what you get. But I, I know you mentioned, I heard one, but then I heard you had a so I can attest just from being on the team. So one of the expectations first is, yes, you're going to get these warm slash hot leads. However, a certain percentage of what you sell has to be from leads that you yourself have created or, uh, you know, hunted for, so to speak. Um, so that makes it where um, you will never be more motivated to stay on the team. Like I got these hot leads coming, but for me to be able to keep these hot leads, I have to continue to lead generate myself because I know that's great that I'm getting sales from the leads that he's giving me. But I also know that for me to stay on the team, I have to get a certain number of sales from the leads that I personally have generated. So that's one of the things that always keeps us hungry to hunt, but then also grateful for what we're getting at the same time. So that's just a perspective from, you know, being on the team. Okay, thanks. That helped a lot, Henry. Thank you for sharing. And then yeah. to hit on V's, the, you can, you know, as far as, you know, he has a four quadrant training, you know, and you can call your expires and it's like, how, what, do I, what do I get people to call? Well, I personally, one of the first things I was taught was circle prospecting because there is an infinite amount of people that you can just circle prospect in certain areas just to see if they want to buy or sell a home. So you can always make those calls and we pretty much break it down from, yeah, we got to do a hundred. Well, maybe you don't have a hundred people in your database, but you can find a hundred people, you know, in Vortex in a certain area or a Red X to be able to call and just circle prospect, right? And maybe you get two or three people in that hundred, but that's another way for you to be able to always have everybody in your team will have people that they can call because, you know, there's, there's infinite number of people who live in a neighborhood. So that's the other part, you know, and that's what I have been doing personally, but that's that. You know, I'll say this before we go. I actually, so I think I had just separated the two and I appreciate you guys so much for sharing that because, you know, I was thinking like, okay, you know, is it just solely kind of based on, you know, my lead feed and what I was bringing in? Because I teach them how to prospect, obviously, on Remind and, you know, and, and uh, you know, the MLS and all those things already. But I was teaching them that for the purpose of, you know, their business and them having someone. And then when they, you know, actually officially um, opted in to join the team and went under me and on paperwork, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, so do I still do that? And I didn't think like you could include it in your metrics. Like I'm basing your staying on this team on how much you go hunt for business as well as how much business I gave you. So on the surface level, I was real basic because the team that I've, you know, actually helped to build and been a part of before. Sorry about that. Y'all, the call was coming in. But the, the team that I've been, built and been on a part of, um, they were purchasing all these crazy Zillow leads, you know, and giving all these people those leads from warm to hot and shark tanks and round robins and all that stuff. And I was like, man, I'm so big on like my organic referral, repeat growth, you know, in business that I just didn't even think to make their participation play a part in my metrics as well. So thank y'all so much. Here's the thing. You need teammates, not robots. If you're just going to hire people, and they're just going to work your leads, then there's a different structure for that. I know teams that are set up that way. And what they do is they put people on low base salaries, like 15 to 20 grand a year, like really low. But then they take the line share of the lead. They take like 90%. It's like 90, 10 splits. That's ridiculous. I didn't want to set my team up that way because I didn't think it made sense for them long term. 
You just got to go through your – so think about this. When So here's a beautiful thing, Shelly Ann and Coach V, that you have. So I'm going to say this real quick. What are the two things that y'all both have in common? Experience and y'all have trained agents. Y'all have been mentors for a long time. Well, now let's take that experience that God has given you. This is where – this is the beautiful thing about God, how strategic he is. What is the one thing that y'all have heard from a lot of agents? Pain points. So now go through your coaching notes, go through your mind, set aside some quiet time and say, okay, I've been coaching agents. I've been mentoring agents for all this time. What are the pain points that I see them running into? Even if they're not telling me it's a pain point, what do I struggle to get them to do? Man, I cannot get Terrence to do this. Well, then what do you need to do? Create a solution to that pain point, and that's your value proposition on your team. It's just that simple. So think about the pain points and the things that you keep having these mentees not struggle with or get out of the business because they can't do this or they can't figure this out. And then you turn around and say, I'm going to create the solution. One of, I'll give you an example. My agents come in and they start selling a lot of real estate fast, but they struggle with doing the paperwork because they get busy and they can't keep up. And then for me, that's why I put together a transaction coordinator team. That was my solution to the pain point. So y'all just need to go back through and think about those pain points and create that solution. Cause y'all got the data in your mind because you've talked to more, y'all talked to so many agents from training them and coaching them and new agents and team agents and this agent. And it's like, T's right. Now let me just sit down and think about the same questions I keep answering in the same pain points I keep putting the fire out for. And then I just create a solution for it. And then that's my top 10 pillars on how I'm gonna build my team. So now when they come over, you can say, hey, look, here's the pain point. Here's the solution. Here's why you should be on my team. Because it's gonna get you here faster. The whole purpose of why people join any organization is, is it's gonna get them somewhere faster, more efficiently and with less strife. And if you can create that, then there's your value. There's your VP. All right, y'all. It's been a good one. Proud of y'all, man. Go back. Check this out. It's right there for you. You have everything within you to do everything you want to do, man. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, this is a great example to end on looking at V and Shelly Ann, how they've mentored agents. They loved on agents. They've coached agents. They have all the data within their spirit now in order to really understand what their unique selling proposition is. And once they're able to identify that, create it in a way that's visual and in a way that they can communicate, there's going to be agents lined up around the building to be on y'all's team, period. Hands down. Thanks for that. Yep. Everyone, thanks for your feedback. Yep. See y'all soon, man. I got to run. Jabari, you wrong for how you messed up our meeting today, but you wrong for that, bro. <laughs> you wrong for how you put me on the wrong path like that, Jabari. I'm going to slap your head when I get to the <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brother going to derail the meeting like that. <laughs> like I said. All right. I'll, I'll be waiting for you. That laugh was definitely needed. <laughs>